Matt Sanchez. I'm one of the uh, translators for Ryutama. Uh, today I just wanted to put together a quick little uh, video to show you how easy it is to put together a character. Uh, the character concept that I have in mind for today is just going to be a, uh, a young merchant um, who he, he likes old books and so uh, he's probably just going to be going out and searching for old books. Maybe his brother who um, who moved away to a different town and he hasn't heard from for a while. So yeah, so uh, let's see how that goes. There are seven steps to creating a character in Ryutama, so let's just take them one at a time. Uh, the first step is the class selection. In the basic rule set, there are seven different character classes that you can choose from. There are the minstrel, the merchant, healer, the hunter, the artisan, the farmer, and the noble. However, four of them, the minstrel, merchant, healer, and hunter, are more geared uh, for beginner players, maybe uh, people who haven't played a whole lot of uh, role-playing games before. So I suggest trying out one of these if this is your first game. So let's break down each class and see what they do. The first one is the minstrel. Um, they wander between each town as they uh, as they go around and entertaining everybody. Um, and so they are really good at uh, at having uh, knowledge of, of different um, different cultures. Uh, they obviously can play music and they're good at traveling. The merchant, uh, they are natural negotiators because you know they they, they sell things all the time. Um, they need more animals than most people because they need to carry things, so that's one other thing that they're good at. Um, also, they're good at trading things. Uh, they can buy things at a low rate and sell them at a high rate. The hunter, well, they're good at tracking monsters. Uh, they're able to uh, to take materials from monsters that, that they defeat, and they can provide food while out in the, uh, in the natural world. Uh, healers can obviously heal people. Um, they can uh, help people out uh, when they get injured, when they have disabilities and whatnot, and they can uh, gather herbs, which can be pretty important. Uh, the farmer um, is uh, is an interesting class. Uh, they also can take more animals than most people. Uh, they're also uh, a little bit tougher than most people, uh, and because there's an off season to farming, uh, they also have a side job. They could pretty much take another skill from anybody else. Uh, from any other class, and they're not as good as other people, but you know it's just another way to show up your uh, your uh, the things that you're missing. Uh, the artisan can make things, and they can also take materials from defeated monsters, and they can fix things as well. Uh, the noble also has a uh, a lot of knowledge because they uh, though they they've studied uh, a lot of things about the world. They also are good at fighting because of of, of their training. And they have, uh, and they're skilled in etiquette, so that they know how to how to talk to uh, to upper class people. For my character, though, I think I'm going to go with the merchant. Our next step is to select our type. There are three different types when creating a character: attack type, technical type, and magic type. And um, no matter which class you choose, you get to choose between these three. Uh, so if you really wanted to, to make you know a powerful combat character, then it doesn't really matter which class you choose. Uh, you're just going to choose the attack type. Uh, but uh, each type uh, grants you specific bonuses. Um, and uh, uh, for example, the attack type makes you stronger in combat. And pretty much that's about all it gets you. Uh, but for some players, that's more than enough. Uh, the technical type uh, pretty much guarantees that you're going to be... Uh, uh, stronger when trying to do specific tasks. Uh, it gives you a plus one to concentration checks, uh, which can really help you out when you want to make sure that you succeed in a check, and, and that's a specific rule that um, that is covered in the books. Um, also, uh, it makes you hard to hit while in combat, and you can carry more things. Uh, the magic type, this is what allows you to cast magic. Uh, without the magic type, uh, then uh, you you won't have access to magic at all. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty much uh, the choice that you're going to make if you want to cast magic. Uh, for me, I am imagining my character that uh, he has learned magic through books, and so this is going to be uh, my choice. Now, uh, when you choose the magic type, you are going to choose two spells from the list of incantations, and also you need to choose a season. Uh, obviously, there's four different seasons. Um, I am imagining my character is a uh, fall season sort of character. So I now have access to the the, uh, the spell list for fall magic. 
which is kind of exciting. Step three is the selection of your ability scores, which will determine your secondary ability scores, such as your life and your, and your uh, mind points and whatnot. Your ability scores are represented by a number, uh, either 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12, which represents not a static number, but the size of the dice that you're going to roll when you're trying to uh, complete a task that is uh, based on that particular stat. For example, if you only have a d4, uh, which means a four-sided dice, um, then you're not going to be quite as successful as if you had a d12, which means a 12-sided dice. Obviously, the 12-sided dice has a, uh, has a much higher chance to roll a much higher number, which is going to help you out when you are trying to, uh, oh, I don't know, um, open up a stone door that leads to a uh, strange garden or something. There are four different stats. Strength represents your physical strength, your resilience, uh, your physical body. Uh, dexterity represents how quick you are. Uh, how quickly you can dodge or, or uh, maybe climb up things and whatnot. Intelligence is how well you can think, how well you can form thoughts, how well you can remember things, um, you know, how, how well you can order your, your thoughts and whatnot. Your spirit is your, your focus, your bravery, um, your conviction, and your courage. To start off, you're going to assign uh, different dice sizes to these four different stats. And you have three different arrays to choose from. Uh, the first one is the even set, in which you're going to assign d6s, a six-sided die, to each of these stats. The second array is the standard set, where uh, one stat is going to be your weak stat. You're only going to have a d4. Uh, two of them will be uh, pretty standard at a d6. And then you're going to have one specialization, which gets to be a d8. The last set is the specialization set, in which two of your stats are going to be rather weak at d4s, and then two of your other stats are both going to be d8s. I'm imagining that my character is a regular sort of guy, except that he might have a little bit more intelligence just because uh, he studies a lot of books. I'm going to set my weakness as strength, and my specialization is probably just going to be my intelligence. Your secondary stats are also pretty simple. Um, it just takes a, a little bit of math. You just multiply the numerical value of your strength by two, and you get your, your maximum hit points. Uh, in my case, uh, I have a d4 for my strength, so I just multiply that by two, I have eight. Uh, so eight is my max HP. Uh, in the same way, your MP, which is your mind points or your magic points, uh, you just multiply your, uh, your spirit by two, which in my case was a uh, d6, so uh, so 6 times 2 is 12, and then I get to add 4 because of my magic type. Uh, so I have 16. I have 16 MP, which is not bad. So we are pretty well on our way now. Uh, next is the weapon selection. Um, there are 7 different weapon types that you can choose from. Uh, once you choose your weapon, you get that weapon for free. Um, it, you don't have to pay for it, it just comes as part of your starting gear. Each of the different weapon types all have pros and cons which I'm not really going to get into right now, but I'm thinking that my character probably won't need a bow because I'll probably be using long-range magic for attacking, so maybe I'll just take a, um, a light blade, just for emergencies, I guess. The next step is kind of important. Uh, every character is going to have their favorite item. This is something that uh, has no mechanical value, but it's something that really sets your character apart. Uh, might just be you know, a pretty bow on in your character's hair, or your, your favorite walking staff, or maybe, you know, your favorite squirrel pet that you keep on your shoulder or something. This should be something that you have some sort of emotional attachment to, and also sort of defines your character. You don't have to think too hard about this. In fact, it might even change over the course of a campaign or even a session. In my character's case, I'm imagining that he carries around a tattered yellow book that has his favorite play in it, that uh, whenever he's bored, he pops open, and uh, he takes a read. The next step is the shopping step. This is the step where you, you can uh, use the 1,000 gold that every character gets, and you can buy um, gear, uh, food, uh, items. Uh, you're gonna need a bunch of stuff when you head out into the wilderness. Um, if you really wanted to, you can, uh, you can start off with picnic rules, which means that everybody gets a, 
a standardized set of items. But I think for now, I'm going to hold off on buying anything until the very first uh, session uh, where everybody can go into town and role play uh, buying stuff together. I always enjoy doing that as part of uh, the first session. Finally, we are at the very last step. This is where you sit down and you determine your character's name, uh, their gender, age, uh, all that stuff. The reason why it's last is because um, a lot of people, including myself, might start off with the, with the name or a concept and it might change over the course of character creation. Maybe somebody else took the class you wanted or, or whatever, uh, but by the time you get to this step, you pretty much have a pretty firm idea of what of what your character, or at least what you imagine your character, is going to be. Um, so yeah, you might want to use a random name table um, to uh, to come up with your name, or you can come up with really whatever you want. Um, there are no limits to what your character's name can be, or your gender, or your age. Um, but uh, yeah, so just have fun with it. At this point, you're also going to be determining your character's image color and your character's history. Your uh, history should be really short, maybe one or two sentences at the most. The same thing with the reason for traveling. Keep that really short. And if, if you really have a really strong idea of what your character is going to be, you can determine his personality, or you can just let, let that emerge during play. I'm not going to bore you with, with the uh, specifics of my character, but I will upload my character sheet so that you can see what I've done with it. So that's pretty much it as far as character creation goes. But I do have a couple of tips. The first thing is that you might want to bring in at least one character concept uh, into the character creation process with you. Um, of course, you can use existing characters from media as inspiration, uh, but you know don't don't copy it whole cloth. You know, um, like if there's a character um, that that you thought was really cool because he's really brave or something, you can take his bravado and copy that over into your your character. But um, yeah, you know, don't you don't want to make you know a uh, a bounty hunter named San Holo, who uh, you know it has a shaggy dog with him everywhere he goes, and it's extremely transparent. But um, yeah, you, you can take a few of those elements and make an interesting character. Um, also, um, if you can bring a character concept with you uh, and have it in mind as you're making the character, you'll help. You'll find that it really, really helps to streamline the process so that you're not you know, um, uh, agonizing over all of your choices and reading over every single ability that every single class, um, uh, et cetera, has. Um, so yeah, character concepts, uh, always a very good idea. Also, um, although in this video, I'm going to be making this character by myself without any other input. Um, if you guys are going to be playing a campaign, I highly recommend that everybody, uh, makes the characters together as a group. Uh, that way, you, know, you can make sure that that um, that there's a good spread between all of the classes. Um, that you're covering all the all the different bases that are going to be needed, um, and also um, as you're making your characters, they can interact with each other and kind of build a history together uh, in the right from the beginning. So that's always kind of cool. Uh, and if you're going to do a group, um, well, first of all, be flexible. But also, you might want to bring two character concepts with you just in case somebody else uh, wants to play that same character that you were thinking of. Uh, then you might have a backup, and that's always a good idea. Uh, uh, one last thing is that um, you don't need to know your character from the very beginning. Uh, you don't need to write up a 15-page backstory, um, and uh, you don't need to know your character's voice right away. Um, so these things can sometimes take two or even three sessions, maybe even longer. Uh, I know it's just you, you are getting to know your character just the same as everybody else is. And that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead, ahead and um, you can leave them on this YouTube video or leave them in the Kickstarter comments or just um, yeah, email me. Um, yeah, so let me know if you want to see some more videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.